Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Because of the MCU, every single studio since 2008, Iron Man has been chasing the success of a branded franchise, whether it's a, mon a monster universe over at Universal that failed at the very beginning, whether it's the kind of DCEU or even the Marvel Universe for Sony. Everyone's tried to get some of that success that Marvel set up. It's now an official thing that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is the most longest running, most successful franchise of all time, where they can put out a middling film, maybe not to some, a not very good film like Thor, Love and Thunder, and make over 800, you know, $800 million at the global box office. You know, this is the reality of the situation. And David Zaslav was very honest with us from the very beginning that um, the new Warner Brothers Discovery would chase that Marvel Cinematic Universe brand and look to bring someone in like Faye. So he's brought in two people. James Gunn, who has worked with Kevin Feige before. He's about to finish off his um, Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 will be released next May. So he has that experience and he knows how to do it. And someone like Peter Safran also understands this kind of concept. So this is what they're chasing. So they are looking to create a reliable brand because the DC Extended Universe has never been a reliable brand. You can like the films, as I do. There's only two films I really have a distaste for in the DC Extended Universe. The other films I really like, I treasure, and I will always remember. So as films, the DCEU, in my opinion, has been great, but that simply isn't enough. And it's not enough to say that the Snyder movies did okay, solid box office, so we should continue with them because they were very divisive movies. And no branding, no studio wants this. In terms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, at least for the first three phases, the mainstream general audience was coming in for them and enjoying them. And even with the highly controversial phase four, people still are coming in and consuming that product because there is a branding. There is a reliable brand that the general audience and consumer trust. And this is what James Gunn, Peter Saffron, Pam Abbey, and Mike DeLuca, and most importantly of all, David Zaslav, are trying to chase. So I was very excited last night with James Gunn's Twitter thread, where he talks about an exciting new future, a brand new universe separate from the DC Extended Universe, that will focus on one story spanning films, TV, shows, and animation. Now, a lot of people have asked me my opinion on this before. Um, am I worried that they could be, you know, chasing the MCU brand, that the DC universe could end up being very similar to the Marvel universe? And I'm very split on this because I suppose it depends what your view is. Do you want one auteur making DC movies, writing and directing DC movies and having one vision, like we got from Zack Snyder, how we're getting with Matt Reeves and how we got from Todd Phillips as well? The beautiful thing here is at the end of the day, we get the best of both worlds. We get the new DC universe spanning one story in film, TV shows and animation, but then we get the Batman, the Batman 2, the Penguin. Arkham, Joker Folly Do the Joker sequel from Todd Phillips, starring Joaquin Phoenix again, but mainly centred around Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn. So, as I say, we're going to have the best of both worlds. But I am excited about what James Gunn is trying to do. It's very exciting to have one story spanning movies, TV and animation because it's never been done before. Yes, the MCU have set up this kind of television show element and having this television showrunner like Kevin Feige running, running one franchise, having one story like stepping through the movies, but having 
also individual threads within those movies. He's done it. And they're getting into our animation, the MCU, as well, slowly but surely. And so what James Gunn is claiming to do is very ambitious. And I'm here for it. And I'm very excited for it. It's one thing to say you're going to do it, but it's how you execute this thing. So it's very, very interesting. So there's lots of questions to be asked about this. In terms of the remaining Hamada movies, are they still DCEU or are they DC Universe? I personally think they're DCEU. Now, as I said on my live today, they can either do one of two things. They can use Flashpoint to start a new universe and, can, and basically make DC Universe like a Blue Beetle and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom than going forward with the new movies, including a brand new Superman movie starring Henry Cavill, or what they could do when they announce what they're going to do and announce their slate, they could say, enjoy the final four movies in the DC Extended Universe chapter, then in 2025 we begin the new DC Universe franchise with one story spanning films, television and animation. Now, which way they'll go with this, I simply do not know. And so that's one thing. We still kind of don't really know if the DCEU and the DC Universe are connected. But considering James Gunn has already said the new DC Universe, that tells you everything you want to know. But here's the confusing thing about it. Henry Cavill, obviously his Superman, we first saw him in the DCEU. We also saw him in two other movies in the DC Extended Universe. So is he playing the same Superman or a new DC Universe Superman? I think, and I don't know, but I think when someone says the new DC Universe, that means maybe, I'm not saying definitely, but maybe this Superman is an entirely different timeline Superman which is interesting because the multiverse literally could have one Superman who's played by one actor and another universe played by the same actor. It can be a thing. It happens in the comics all the time. It's easier in comics because you don't have anyone portraying these roles, but it can simply be done. Now, Walter Hamada was implementing a multiverse strategy. James Gunn in his thread said he wants all the fans from the multiverse to get involved. He mentioned multiverse. James Gunn is someone who doesn't waste his syllables or his words. Is that a hint that we're sticking with a multiverse strategy? If they use the Flash to start a new timeline, it's obvious this won't be the same timeline that Walter Hamada was going to implement. One of the reasons that Batgirl was shelved that they didn't like that new timeline. One of the reasons. There are many reasons why Batgirl was shelved. So, it's clear this may be similar to the Hamada plan, but there are going to be some differences within it. If, we, if we're saying the DCEU is the same as DC Universe, and I'm not convinced that it is, well, the DCEU under Hamada, we're going to do this final crisis arc from Crisis on Infinite Earths and those graphic novels. So it, could that be something that they do? Now... If they do that, we have a clue on what they're going to do, because I think they were going down the new gods route. So in the Flash movie, now we know that James Gunn and Peter Saffron, Pam Agby, Mike DeLuca and David Zaslav have been working on a new DC blueprint since April or May. It's around that time, by the way, they did extensive reshoots on the Flash. So I'm guessing they've already made the changes they wanted to make to that movie to implement their brand new DC Universe. But if they're doing what Hamada was doing, then and there is a Final Crisis story, that means Ben Affleck's warning to Barry Allen at the end of The Flash is still there, and maybe he's doing that as well in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. So people thinking, oh my God, Batflex in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, he's back as, back as Batman. Let me be clear, at this moment in time, in terms of the timeline of the DC Extended Universe, he's still Batman. But in a new DC Universe, someone else can play Batman. You know, someone else can play all these different characters that have been played by other actors in the DC Extended Universe. Or, 
Basically, if they go with the DCEU finishes with Aquaman and Lost Kingdom, we're starting afresh and, and that's it. We're just starting again, basically. Then they can use some previous actors and obviously some new actors as well. We simply don't know everything. And I would be misleading you if I was telling you, if I told you a definitive way that going to go at this. Basically, all we know right now is one story spanning TV, film and animation is coming probably from 2025 onwards. And in 2024, we're getting Joker 2. And in 2025, we're definitely getting the Batman. That's all we know right now. So when will we get a slate? Because I feel they've been working on this since April, May, like secretly and setting up their new blueprint and new DC Universe, I think we may get a slate and clarification if the DCEU and the DC Universe are connected or not. This has been Movies TV Mad. I'm Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wife. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again in the next video. Until we see each other again, goodbye, au revoir, au revoir.